is Jessica from IntelliDance here. Today I would love to share with you eight simple rhymes and songs you can do with your baby at home. These rhymes and songs are called Baby Brain Play and they're part of each IntelliDance Babies class. The Baby Brain Play rhymes and songs are based off of movements your baby will experience through primitive and postural reflexes in the first few years of life. These reflexes integrate the brain, body, and nervous system and are critical in supporting your baby's development of their lower and limbic brain. Each of these rhymes and songs is based on one of eight different developmental movement patterns. These movement patterns are the foundation of all physical literacy skills. Not only do these rhymes and songs support the integration of the brain and the body, but they'll also support your little one's language and expressive communication development. They're also a wonderful way for you to play and engage with your baby at home on a daily basis. Like everything we do at IntelliDance, it's about having fun on purpose. Our first baby brain play pattern is breath. Breath is life. Breath is key to our ability to move, think, and feel. Breath is key to providing our brain and our body with the oxygen that it needs to fully function. Breath also supports us releasing stress and anxiety and feeling at ease. We're gonna start with a breath poem today called Bubblegum. For our younger babies, we're gonna start by laying them in front of us. If your baby's a little bit older, you can also sit them up. Once you've picked the position for your baby, take one palm and in a clockwise motion, you're gonna draw a circle on their belly. This feels really nice for their digestion as well. Once we've made that circle on our baby's belly, we're gonna say a poem that goes like this. Bubble gum, bubble gum in a dish. How many bubbles does my baby wish? From here, I'm going to gently blow across my baby's nose and mouth. One, and two. What you'll notice as your breath passes over your baby's nose and mouth, they naturally take an inhale and then release with an exhale. So let's try that one again. We'll start with those circles on our baby's bellies. Here we go. Bubble gum, bubble gum in a dish. How many bubbles does my baby wish? We blow one and two. Let's try it one more time. Let's look at our babies and bubble gum, bubble gum in a dish. How many bubbles does my baby wish? We blow one and two. Great job. Our second baby brain play pattern is tactile, the sense of touch. Touch is critical to our babies developing their body awareness. By touching different parts on our baby's bodies, they start body mapping, understanding where their body parts exist and where those body parts exist in relationship to other body parts. Touch is also critical to developing our baby's emotional development. By touching, cuddling, and tickling our babies, we support secure attachment, which is critical to our baby's bonding and connecting with us and feeling safe in the world. You truly cannot hold, tickle, touch, or cuddle your little one too much when they're little. They thrive off of that human connection. We're gonna start with a tactile poem called Hickory Dickory Dock. Again, you can lay or sit your baby in front of you. For this activity, there's also the option of doing it with your baby laying on their back facing you, or if you'd like to provide them with a little bit of tummy time, you can reverse it by laying your baby on their belly so that you're taking that tactile sensation to the back side of their body. I recommend always starting though with your baby facing you. They love to see your face and watch your facial expressions. 
In this poem, as we say, hickory dickory dock, we're gonna gently do different tactile sensations up our baby's bodies. When we get to the top, we're gonna do a gentle clap or snap. I'll leave it up to you. Just make sure you're not too close to your baby's face. No one likes a clap or a snap right in their face. Think about eight to 10 inches above their face. Then we're gonna gently come back down their body again. Again, if your baby prefers to sit, you can have them seated facing you, or you can also always bring them to your lap and do it with them on your lap. For today, I'm gonna lay bananas in front of me so you can clearly see the actions. Remember, as I deliver the poem, I'm gonna look at you so you can learn the lyrics. But when you're doing it with your baby, make sure you're watching them. They love to see your face. We're gonna start by gently tapping down by our baby's toes. We tap down by their toes. Here we go. Hickory dickory dock. The mouse tapped up the clock. The clock struck one. The mouse tapped down. Tappity, 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 tappity. Hickory dickory dock. Let's squeeze. Hickory dickory dock. The mouse squeezed up the clock. The clock struck two. One, two. The mouse squeezed down. Squeezy, 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 squeezy. Hickory dickory dock. Let's brush. Hickory dickory dock. The mouse brushed up the clock. The clock struck three. One, two, three. The mouse went wee. Hickory dickory dock, little pokes. Hickory dickory dock. The mouse poked up the clock. The clock struck four. One, two, three, four. The mouse said, no more. Hickory dickory dock. The third baby brain play pattern is core distal, or as I like to call it in the baby's classes, cuddle and stretch. This is directly related to the moral reflex, sometimes called the startle reflex. In this movement pattern, babies are experiencing extension outwards and contraction inwards. This extension and contraction supports the development of their core muscles, which is important for proper body alignment. Babies are also continuing to work on their body awareness. As they extend outwards, they're discovering how their kinesphere can increase or decrease as they get smaller. It also helps them understand their body's relationship to the space around them. Now there's a few different ways we're gonna support babies of different ages and stages in this particular movement pattern. For our very youngest babies who don't quite yet have their own head and neck support to sit up on their own, I recommend laying them across your lap. Their legs can come up on your belly and their heads are resting towards your knees. From here, I'm gonna bend my own knees in so my baby's legs cuddle in towards their core and I'm gonna gently bring their arms in as well. As I stretch them out, I'll stretch out my own legs, letting them extend out and then gently contract them back in. For our older babies who are sitting up on their own, you can flip that around so that your baby is sitting up on your lap like this. You can cuddle them in and stretch them out. And if your baby prefers to look at you, just flip them the other way. So again, they're seated on your lap, cuddle them in nice and close, and then stretch them out. One thing we always talk about in the IntelliDance Babies program is we respect our babies. So if for whatever reason your baby resists the stretching or the cuddling, maybe don't play this one today. Always respect your baby's needs in the moment. We're gonna do the core distal today using a song I'm sure you know called Twinkle, Twinkle Little Star. Let's start with our babies cuddled up nice and close in that core position. We'll add a little rock side to side to establish the beat and we'll sing like this. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, stretch. How I wonder what you are, cuddle up 
up above the world so high, stretch like a diamond in the sky. Cuddle, twinkle, twinkle, little star, stretch. How I wonder what you are. And as you're singing the song with your baby, you don't need to say the cuddle and stretch. I just added that so you knew when to move from that extension into that contraction. Our fourth baby brain play pattern is head tail. In the head tail movement pattern, babies are exploring movements of the head in relationship to the pelvis. These movements of the head and the tail support our baby's spinal mobility, as well as continue to increase strength in the core, the back, the neck, shoulders, chest, arms, wrists, and hands. So you'll often see your babies doing this when they're playing on the floor on their tummy. They'll start out on their tummy and they'll lift their head, strengthening the cervical spine, as their pelvis anchors into the earth. As they lower their head, their pelvis may pop up. Eventually, as your baby gets stronger, they're going to start to push themselves up on their arms like they're in a little baby yoga cobra position. Our babies will also explore this movement side to side as they observe the world around them. This also supports their visual development because they're working on vision acuity, tracking and observing the world around them. You'll also see your babies move through this pattern on their back. They'll work at lifting their little heads up and you'll notice their pelvis will come up with them. As a Pilates instructor, I sometimes call this our baby's 100s. It almost looks like they're going into that 100s position, like they're doing a little baby crunch or Pilates exercise. So again, this is really important for developing our baby's core muscles so that they're able to have that proper alignment. So many different things we're working on with this head tail pattern. Now for our little ones, we wanna make sure that we're being very, very gentle in this activity. We're gonna use the song, The Wheels on the Bus to explore some different pelvis movements. I'm gonna start with laying my baby in front of me and again, if your baby is a little bit younger and you would like them a little bit closer, you can bring them to that variation where they're laying across your lap, just like this. But for today, I'm going to do this one with bananas on the mat. We're going to start by holding our babies right up at the top of their thigh where that little chub chub lives. And we're going to make gentle circles with their pelvis in one direction as those wheels on the bus go round and round. When the babies on the bus go up and down, we're gonna gently lift the baby's pelvis up towards their hat and gently bring it back down, up and down. Then we'll go back to the wheels on the bus going round and round and we'll take that pelvic circle the opposite direction. So our babies are experiencing range of motion in both ways. The next time the babies go up and down, I'm gonna scoop my hands underneath my baby's shoulder blades, and if my baby is still quite young, I'm also gonna make sure I'm supporting the back of their head. I'm gonna gently lift my baby's head off the ground, curling them towards that core, and then gently lay them back down. And if your baby is under eight weeks of age, I don't recommend doing the upper body variation yet just stick with the lower body movements. This one can also be really great if your baby's feeling a little gassy as these pelvis movements will sometimes help those gas bubbles move through the digestive tract. So let's start again by making those gentle circles with our baby's pelvis and we'll sing. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round all through the town. The babies on the bus go up and down, up and down, up and down. The babies on the bus go up and down all through the town. 
Let's circle the other way. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round, all through the town. Hands go under their shoulders. The babies on the bus go up and down, up and down, up. And down, the babies on the bus go up and down, all through the town. Our fifth baby brain play pattern is upper and lower body. In the first year of life, babies are working on synchronizing movements of the upper and lower body, but they can't synchronize them right away. You'll first notice your baby doing this again, laying on their tummy on the floor. They'll ground their lower body by pressing into their legs and their feet while they try doing swimming and reaching motions with their upper body. Then they'll ground themselves with their upper body by pressing into their arms, allowing their legs to kick and move. This upper and lower body grounding is also critical to developing our baby's emotional stability. When our babies are grounding their upper or their lower body, it helps them find emotional regulation and also supports the long-term ability to set healthy emotional boundaries. For this activity today, we're gonna turn our little ones over again onto their backs so that we can see them. For our younger babies, we're gonna make sure that they're fully supported by laying on the mat or on the floor. And we're gonna do gentle movements of the upper and lower body. Again, if your baby's very, very young, you can bring them to your lap so they can sit a little bit closer as you do these movements. Now for some of our older babies, they may want to be sitting, particularly for the upper body movement pattern. If your baby has started clapping or waving on their own, you might also choose to model the movements for them to see if they'll imitate them back to you. Again, remember, even if your baby isn't doing the movements along with you, they're learning so much by watching you do the movements and listening to the song we're going to sing. So again, I'm gonna start by laying bananas on his back and we're gonna start with the upper body variation. We're gonna sing the song, Open and Shut Them. So we're gonna start by gently holding on to our baby's hands or wrists and bringing them apart, and then we're gonna shut them up tight. We open them apart and shut them up tight. We sing, open and shut them, open and shut them. Give your hands a clap, clap, clap. Open and shut them, open and shut them. Put them in your lap, lap, lap. Stretch them, stretch them, slowly stretch them up to the sky. Wave your arms from side to side and give a little high. Great job. Now we're gonna go to the lower body variation of the song. For our younger babies again, we can simply leave them laying on the mat in front of us. For our older babies, we also have the option of bringing them to our laps and adding a gentle little knee bounce as we do the activity. For our older babies, they find this bouncing action very engaging. So you can see the actions clearly. I'm gonna lay bananas back down on the mat. We're gonna gently hold on to our baby's feet. And again, we're gonna gently stretch their legs open and then shut them up tight and open and shut them up tight. And we'll sing. Open and shut them, open and shut them. Give your feet a clap, clap, clap. Open and shut them, open and shut them. Give your feet a tap, tap, tap. Walk them, walk them, slowly walk them up to your nose. Watch out for my fingers, they will tickle on your toes. The sixth 
baby brain play pattern is body sides, the right side and the left side of the body. This movement pattern is important because we want to make sure we're equally balancing the right and the left sides of the body for equal strength and mobility. Everyone's going to have a dominant body side, but by ensuring we're helping our babies move through right and left side movements equally, we're also supporting balancing equal brain hemisphere development, the right and the left side of the brain. In this movement pattern, our babies are also working on their horizontal eye tracking, allowing their eyes to track from left to right. There's many different ways babies move through the body sides pattern in the first year of life. The first way they'll experience it is through rolling. Our babies will extend one side of their body while the opposite side is in contraction, which allows them to eventually move into a roll. Our babies will also experience this movement pattern when they first are learning to sit and they're working on keeping their balance. They'll plant one hand as they tilt to one side to support balancing and tilt to the other. Our babies will also experience this when they start belly crawling or creeping. They'll extend one side of the body while the opposite side moves into contraction and then they'll switch, contracting one side of the body as the other side moves into extension, which allows them to basically do a little army crawl across the floor. Finally, you'll also notice when your babies first start to try walking on their own, it's more of a body side movement. I like to call my tykes, which are ages 12 to 24 months, our waddlers, because instead of walking in a more adult type gait, they tend to rock their body from one side to the other. For this song, we're going to have different variations based on your baby's developmental stage. Again, if your baby is still not working on self-seating, we're gonna keep our little ones laying on the mat. I'm gonna take same arm as leg and keeping my face in line with my baby's face, I'm gonna gently roll them to one body side and come back to the center, then take the opposite body side and again, roll the other way. And I'm trying as much as I can to keep my gaze in line with my baby's gaze because they're naturally going to want to track my face. So I want to keep their head and neck in line with the rest of their spine. For our babies who are working on sitting on their own and finding balance, we're going to allow them to sit up and we're going to support their core, our hands around their torso. And then we're going to gently rock them from side to side. And what you're watching for with your baby is their ability to plant one hand down to provide them with balance and then move the opposite way. So just a little gentle bum rock. For our babies who are starting to pull themselves up to standing and cruising along furniture, we'll again support their core, but bring them to their feet. And we'll do that same rocking motion, looking to see if they're able to transfer their weight from their right foot to their left foot and back. We're gonna sing the song London Bridges as we do this with our baby. You pick the variation that works best for your baby today and we'll all sing. Here we go. London bridges falling down, falling down, falling down. London bridges falling down, my fair baby. Build it up with love and hugs, love and hugs, love and hugs. Build it up with love and hugs, my fair baby. Our seventh baby brain play pattern is cross lateral. Cross lateral movements involve opposite sides of the body moving together or one side of the body crossing the midline of the body. Babies will experience this through crawling movements. When a baby crawls, they move the opposite arm and leg at the same side to move themselves forwards. As our babies work on these crawling patterns, they're also converging their horizontal and their vertical eye tracking, which becomes very important later in life when they move into reading and writing activities. 
Finally, when our babies cross the midline of the body or are moving opposite sides of the body together, they're also building the pathways between the right and the left side of the brain. These pathways that connect the right and the left side of the brain are critical for robust thinking, cognitive actions such as planning, critical thinking, and sequencing. We're going to take our babies on a little horsey ride today to experience cross-lateral movements. Again, we have different variations depending on the age and stage of your baby. For our youngest babies, we can either leave them laying on their mat, bringing opposite hand to foot, or again, you can bring them up onto your lap, laying across your legs, adding a gentle knee bounce, and again, connecting opposite hand and foot. For our older babies, we're gonna bring them up onto our lap so we can add that little knee bounce, allow them to rest their backs against our bellies and chest, and we'll again create that connection with opposite hand and foot. Babies love horsey noises. So we're gonna start with some of those. What does a horsey say? <laughs> Opposite hand and foot, here we go. Shoo a little horsey, shoo a little mare with a tap, tap here and a tap, tap there. Shoo a little horsey, shoo a little mare with a tap, tap here and a tap, tap there. Switch. Shoo a little horsey, shoo a little mare with a tap, tap here and a tap, tap there. Shoo a little horsey, shoo a little mare with a tap, tap here and a tap, tap there. Hold on, cause our horsies go. The eighth baby brain play pattern is vestibular. And even though it's the last developmental movement pattern we move through in baby brain play, it actually started to develop in utero while your baby was still in the womb. The vestibular system is related to the inner ear. The vestibular system has the very important job of helping us stay aware of where we are in space in relationship to our own bodies and everything else that surrounds us. The vestibular system also supports sensory processing and integration. And you naturally do it as a caregiver every time your baby fusses. When your baby fusses, you naturally want to bounce or rock your baby. When we bounce or rock, this activates the vestibular system and supports our babies with that sensory processing. Now, little ones love to feel a little bit dizzy and off balance. So you're going to notice even as your baby becomes a toddler and a preschooler, they're naturally exploring vestibular movements on their own through play. But today, we're gonna pick our babies up and we're gonna do a little laundry to support them in activating their vestibular system. A couple of safety things for this last activity. First of all, if your baby is very little, we're going to remember that little babies enjoy little movements. That being said, if you have an older baby who startles easily, continue to make those movements a little bit smaller. For our younger babies, or our babies who need to feel a little bit more secure, we're gonna make sure that we're gonna hold them in a chest-to-chest -chest relationship with one hand again supporting the back of their head. This chest-to-chest -chest relationship helps them feel very safe in your arms. For our older babies who maybe enjoy looking out at the space, you can flip them around. We're gonna create a little bucket seat with our arms so our baby's knees stay in line with their pelvis and hold them in nice and close. Now, caregiver safety. You wanna make sure that you're safe too. We're gonna to be doing some twisting actions. So again, keep some softness in your knees so your pelvis can travel with you. We're also going to do a down and an up. And I like to think of this as a little mini baby squat. I'll turn sideways so you can see. My weight's gonna stay in my heels. And as I come down and up, I'm gonna draw my abdominal muscles in towards my spine, and I'm gonna stick my sit bones out behind me like I'm sitting in a chair, 
pulling my baby in close, trying to make sure my spine stays long and tailbone down versus letting my tummy muscles drop to the floor and feeling a pinch in my low back. And then I'm gonna squeeze my glutes to stand back up. So just a little baby squat and up. Finally, we end this one with a spinning motion. Now, as an adult, you might have a different vestibular system than your baby. So if you get dizzy quite easily, I want you to start by spinning very slowly so your baby is safe in your arms. As you and your baby feel more comfortable with these movements, you can increase the speed of your spin. We're gonna start by bringing our babies in nice and close, and we're gonna put some clothes in the tub. We go, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. We're gonna gently shake in some soap. And fill it up with water. We twist, twist, twist in the washing machine. Twist, twist, twist until we're clean. We spin and stop. And the water goes down. Let's do another load, put in those clothes. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Gently shake in some soap. Fill it up with bubbles. We twist, twist, twist in the washing machine. Twist, twist, twist until we're clean. We spin and stop, and the water goes down. 